The crisp autumn air filled my lungs as I trekked through the dense forest, my best friend Liam by my side. We had been planning this camping trip for months, eagerly awaiting the chance to escape the suffocating grip of our daily lives. The vibrant hues of the changing leaves and the soft crunch of the undergrowth beneath our feet only added to the sense of adventure that coursed through my veins. As we ventured deeper into the woods, the sun's rays struggled to penetrate the thick canopy above, casting an ethereal glow on the forest floor. The silence was broken only by the occasional chirping of birds and the gentle rustling of leaves in the breeze. I couldn't shake the feeling that this trip would be different from our previous outings. There was an inexplicable energy in the air, a sense of anticipation that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. We found the perfect spot to set up camp near a babbling river, its crystal clear waters promising a refreshing respite from the day's hike. While Liam busied himself with pitching our tent and gathering firewood, I decided to explore our surroundings. I wandered through the trees, marveling at the untouched beauty of the forest. The damp, earthy scent of moss and decaying leaves filled my nostrils as I navigated the uneven terrain. Suddenly, a flash of color caught my eye. Nestled among the undergrowth was a patch of peculiar mushrooms. Their vibrant, almost luminescent hues seemed to beckon me closer, enticing me with the promise of an unforgettable experience. I had always been fascinated by the idea of trying natural hallucinogens, and these mushrooms seemed to be the perfect opportunity. I carefully plucked a few of the mushrooms, my heart racing with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. I knew Liam would disapprove, but the temptation was too strong to resist. As I made my way back to the campsite, I couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration at the thought of the adventure that lay ahead. Liam looked up from the crackling fire as I approached, his brow furrowed with concern as he noticed the mushrooms in my hand. I brushed off his warnings, my mind already made up. I popped a mushroom into my mouth, savoring the earthy, slightly bitter taste as I chewed. Liam watched in disbelief as I consumed a few more a mischievous grin spreading across my face. Little did I know, this impulsive decision would set in motion a chain of events that would test the limits of our friendship and sanity. As the sun began to set over the forest, casting long shadows across the campsite, we settled in for the night, blissfully unaware of the horrors that awaited us in the coming hours. And as I sat there, contemplating my decision, I knew one thing was for sure. I shouldn't have eaten those mushrooms. As the night descended upon the forest, a chill crept into the air, and the once comforting sounds of nature began to take on an eerie quality. The crackling of the campfire seemed to grow louder, casting distorted shadows that danced menacingly on the surrounding trees. I huddled closer to the flames, trying to shake off the growing sense of unease that had settled in the pit of my stomach. The mushrooms I had consumed earlier were starting to take effect and the world around me began to shift and warp in unsettling ways. The colors of the forest seemed to intensify, the greens and browns melting together into a kaleidoscope of hues that pulsated with a life of their own. The air felt thick and heavy, pressing down on me like a physical weight, and I found myself struggling to breathe. I glanced across the campfire at Liam, who was telling a story about a previous camping trip, but his words sounded distant and muffled, as if they were being spoken from underwater. I tried to focus on what he was saying, but my mind kept drifting, pulled into a vortex of swirling thoughts and emotions. It started with a subtle shift in perception, a slight warping of reality that made the world around me feel like a surreal dreamscape. The trees seemed to lean in closer, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers, grasping at the fabric of my sanity. The shadows at the edge of the campsite appeared to move and writhe with a sinister intent, as if they were alive and watching my every move. I stumbled to my feet, mumbling an excuse to Liam as I retreated into the woods, desperate for some semblance of solitude. I needed to escape the suffocating atmosphere of the campsite, to clear my head and regain my bearings. But as I ventured deeper into the forest, I realized that I had made a terrible mistake. The trees loomed over me, their towering forms seeming to stretch into the infinite void of the night sky. The undergrowth beneath my feet became a treacherous landscape, 
with roots and vines twisting and turning like serpents, threatening to ensnare me with every step. The once familiar forest had transformed into an alien world, a nightmarish realm where every shadow held a hidden danger. I could feel the mushrooms taking hold, their psychedelic tendrils weaving through my mind, distorting my thoughts and perceptions. Reality began to blur and shift, and I found myself questioning the very nature of my existence. Was I really here, in this forest, or was this all just a figment of my imagination? A hallucination brought on by the powerful substances coursing through my veins. Paranoia began to set in, creeping up my spine like an icy chill. I spun around, my eyes darting frantically, searching for the source of my unease, but finding only the endless expanse of the forest. The faces of the people I loved morphed into grotesque caricatures, their features distorted and twisted, their eyes filled with malice and deceit. Paranoid thoughts consumed me and I began to see hidden meanings and conspiracies in every interaction I had ever had with Liam. Every shared memory, every moment of laughter and camaraderie became tainted by suspicion. I convinced myself that he had brought me out here with sinister intentions, that he was plotting against me, waiting for the right moment to strike. I watched as Ethan stumbled into the woods, a growing sense of concern gnawing at my gut. I had warned him about the mushrooms, but he had been too stubborn to listen. Now, as I sat alone by the campfire, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. I tried to focus on the tasks at hand, adding more wood to the fire and preparing our dinner, but my mind kept drifting back to Ethan. The look in his eyes before he disappeared into the forest had been unsettling. A mixture of fear and something else, something darker that I couldn't quite place. As the minutes turned into hours, my worry grew. I called out Ethan's name, my voice echoing through the trees, but there was no response. I decided to venture into the woods, hoping to find him and bring him back to the safety of the campsite. I trudged through the undergrowth, the beam of my flashlight cutting through the darkness. The forest seemed to close in around me, the shadows taking on a menacing quality. Suddenly, I heard a rustling in the bushes behind me. I spun around, my heart pounding in my chest, only to find Ethan emerging from the foliage. But something was wrong. The look on his face was one of pure terror, his eyes wide and wild, his skin pale and slick with sweat. I approached him slowly, my hands raised in a gesture of peace, trying to calm him down. But as I got closer, I could see that something was very wrong. Ethan's body was trembling his fists clenched at his sides, and there was a darkness in his eyes that I had never seen before. Before I could react, Ethan lunged at me, his fists connecting with my face, my ribs, my stomach. I tried to defend myself, to push him away, but he was relentless, his strength fueled by a madness that I couldn't comprehend. I felt my consciousness slipping away, my vision blurring as I sank into a sea of darkness. I felt a sickening crunch beneath my hands, followed by a chilling silence that seemed to stretch on for an eternity. As I knelt there, my breath coming in ragged gasps, the fog of paranoia slowly began to lift, replaced by a creeping sense of horror as the realization of what I had done began to sink in. Liam lay motionless beneath me, his face a mask of blood and bruises, his eyes staring blankly at the starlit sky above. The weight of my actions crashed down upon me, and I felt a scream building in my throat, a primal expression of the anguish and regret that threatened to consume me. The first rays of dawn crept through the trees, casting a pale, eerie light over the forest floor. I blinked my eyes struggling to adjust to the sudden brightness after the long, dark night. As I sat there, cradling Liam's unconscious body, the events of the previous evening came rushing back to me in a tidal wave of horror and regret. The mushrooms had worn off, leaving me with a sickening clarity of mind. I looked down at my hands, still covered in Liam's blood, and felt a wave of nausea wash over me. What had I done? How could I have let myself lose control like that, to let the darkness within me take over so completely? I knew I had to get help, 
to find a way to make things right. But as I looked around the campsite, I realized the gravity of my situation. We were miles from civilization, with no cell phone reception and no easy way to contact the outside world. I would have to carry Liam out of the forest myself to get him the medical attention he so desperately needed. I struggled to my feet, my body aching from the exertion of the night before. I hoisted Liam onto my shoulders, his limp form a dead weight against my back. I staggered forward, each step a Herculean effort as I navigated the treacherous terrain of the forest floor. The journey seemed to last an eternity, my mind reeling with the consequences of my actions. What would happen when we finally made it back to the world of the living? Would Liam ever forgive me for what I had done? Would I ever be able to forgive myself? As I emerged from the tree line, the sight of a distant highway filled me with a sense of relief. I flagged down the first car I saw, my desperate pleas for help spilling from my lips in a frantic torrent. The driver, a middle-aged man with kind eyes, took one look at Liam's battered form and immediately called for an ambulance. The rest of the day passed in a blur of sirens and hospital corridors. I watched as Liam was wheeled away on a stretcher, his fate uncertain. The doctors and nurses asked me questions, but I could barely bring myself to speak. The weight of my guilt was like a physical presence, pressing down on my chest until I could scarcely breathe. Hours turned into days as I kept vigil by Liam's bedside, watching the steady rise and fall of his chest as he lay there, unresponsive. The doctors told me that he had suffered a severe concussion and multiple fractures, but that he was expected to make a full recovery. But even as relief washed over me at the news, I knew that the true damage lay much deeper. When Liam finally awoke, the look in his eyes was one of confusion and betrayal. He listened in silence as I poured out my heart, begging for his forgiveness, trying to explain the inexplicable. But even as the words left my lips, I knew that they were hollow, that nothing I could say would ever be enough to undo the harm I had caused. In the days and weeks that followed, I tried to pick up the pieces of my shattered life. I threw myself into my work, into my relationships, into anything that could distract me from the gnawing guilt that ate away at my soul. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't escape the memory of that fateful night the night that had changed everything. Liam and I drifted apart, the once unbreakable bond between us strained to the breaking point. We still spoke, still saw each other from time to time, but the easy camaraderie of our youth was gone, replaced by a wary distance that neither of us knew how to bridge. And as I lay awake at night, staring at the ceiling of my empty apartment, contemplating my decisions, I knew one thing was for sure. I shouldn't have eaten those mushrooms.